We are coming to you from uh, TV station here in Reedsville, and here's how you can reach us if you want to uh, have a Bible study or anything that we can help you with. 276-340-2653 is my phone number. A word from the Lord at gmail.com is my email address, and if you want to visit with us, the Church of Christ, meet at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, and we have Bible study at 9 a.m. on Sunday, and worship at 10 a.m., and then Bible study at 7 p.m. on Thursday nights. We're going through the book of 1 Corinthians, so hope you'll come out and visit with us and study God's Word with us any chance you have. Uh, we'd like to see you. If you're in the uh, Martinsville area, H23 Starling Avenue, it's where you can meet with the brethren there, 120 American Legion in Danville, in uh, that area, and so we know you will always be a welcome guest anytime you assemble with the Church of Christ in this area, especially if you are interested in studying God's Word, and the fact that you're watching this program tells me that you're ready for a, a, a more Bible study. Friends, I want to remind you that starting Sunday, this, this coming Sunday, September 3rd, we're going to start a, be doing a uh, live radio program on Rockingham County Radio. That's 1490 and 1420, uh, WLOE and WMYN. This is going to be a live uh, call-in program, just like we're doing here, doing here, but we're going to be taking your phone calls. It's 5 p.m. starting on Sunday. <clears throat> and so tell all your friends and your family. There's maybe some people that don't have uh, cable. Maybe they don't have star news maybe they have dish or something like that they're missing out on all our Bible programs well this is another way that you can watch it if you have a smartphone you can download the app RCR uh, Rockingham County Radio is really what you need to search for in the Play Store I don't know what it is on the iPhone but uh, uh, what's it called on the iPhone? I don't have an iPhone okay <laughs> find somebody has an iPhone and uh, anyway but uh, just find the app there's an app for it uh, Rockingham County Radio, and it, and it looks just like this. It's yellow and it has RCR, it's what, what the uh, logo looks like. But download that and you can watch it on your smartphone or you can online. It's going to be streaming uh, uh, live as well. So you can go to uh, uh, WLOE, uh, Rockingham County Radio, uh, dot com on your on the internet and you can find it there. And so uh, there's a number of ways where you can uh, study uh, God's Word. And we hope that you will uh, take advantage of that. So tell everyone, starting Sunday, September the 3rd, the live calling program on Rockingham County Radio. So uh, tell all your friends and family about that. All right, friends, do you desire to be wise? I mean, I don't know how many people that, I don't know many people that wouldn't want to be smarter or wiser, but that is exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. You know, I think everybody wants to be smarter and people want to want to believe that they're smarter than they really are sometimes. Um, I was watching a program and actually showed how our brain makes us uh, think that we're smarter than we really are. And the, the test was people were asked to give in a range how many books are in the Old Testament. And the only, the only answer, the only right answer was pick a range of between X amount you know, what's the smallest number, the largest number, and how many books do you think are in the Old Testament? And some people were saying, well, my low number is going to be 5, and my high number is going to be 12. But the right answer would be, set it as, as many as possible. You know, say from, from 1 to infinity. And you would get the right answer, because 39 books in the Old Testament would fall in that range. And the study was saying that people... Their brain, they don't want to think that they're dumb, so they want to limit their knowledge. They want to limit what they know because they think that makes them look smarter, when really, it made them look dumber. But the smart thing to do would be say, well, I don't know how many books are in the Old Testament, but it's got, I know there's more than one, and so to say one to, you know, a thousand, and you would get it covered. So we want to be smarter. We want to be wiser. And friends, if you want wisdom, it's going to come from God's Word. Proverbs 2, verse 6 Proverbs 2 and verse 6, <clears throat> the wise man says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Now, if you want wisdom, you want to be wise, now not necessarily not the wisdom of the world, but if you want wisdom that can actually save your soul and better your life, it's going to come from hearing the wisdom that comes out of God's mouth. Now, where do we get that wisdom? Where are we going to get the wisdom that comes out of God's mouth? Well, the Bible is the wisdom that comes from God's mouth. God speaks to us 
through his son, Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews, oh, excuse me, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> I'll get in a minute here. Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in his last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he created the world. Now, so God speaks through his Son, and his Son has given inspired men his word. In John 17, Jesus said, I have given them thy word, and this is the word that came from God. So this is the word of God. This is what's going to bring wisdom. It's the engrafted word that can save your souls. James 1, verse 21. So what we're looking for are individuals who are looking to be wise, who want to be smarter and wiser in the ways of, of, of God. What does it take to be wise then? Well, I want to give you, I want to talk about some individuals who are very wise. And in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 14, we meet wise men. Now, everybody knows the story about the wise men, how they came to see baby Jesus in the manger, right? Wrong. See, maybe you're not as wise as you thought. But we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 14, to see about these wise men who came to Jesus. Now, why were they wise? Well, really, that, that label, that, that moniker, wise men, is really kind of a misnomer. It's really... Uh, uh, it's not really accurate. These men were sorcerers. They were astrologers. It's the same word that's used in Acts 13. Whoops, sorry about that. Same word that's used in Acts. Acts chapter 13. And we're going to look at verse 6. We're going to meet another man. And this man is named <clears throat> Bar-Jesus. Alright? And the Bible says they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. So this, this uh, uh, same man, uh, uh, Elimaeus, as it was also called, he was a sorcerer. That's the same word that's used in reference to the wise men in Matthew chapter 2. Now, so they weren't really wise, like we might think, you know, highly educated in, uh, <clears throat> or, uh, I don't know, maybe not highly educated, but maybe we think of a wise man, we think of someone of... of White, white beard, and you know he's got a lot of wisdom, uh, age on him, and he he knows everything. He knows uh, the right thing to do, right thing to say, and, and so forth. But these men were actually astrologers, or sorcerers, and 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 so uh, that's kind of a misnomer. But they were wise in one sense; they were looking for Jesus. Now these same men, these kind of sorcerers, the same men that if you look at Daniel two. In Daniel chapter 2, the king called the, the wise men to tell him his dream. The king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dream, so they came and stood before the king. So these men couldn't interpret the dream, but Daniel could. And so I'm trying to paint the picture that uh, these men, the Bible says they were wise. They're really astrologers, sorcerers, maybe they're stargazers. <clears throat> but they were wise in a sense that they were looking for Jesus. They were looking after knowing some information. They said, you know, we know some information. We need to know more. Now, what was it that caused them to want to look or caused them to be wise? Well, notice, in Matthew chapter 2, in verse 1, they saw a star. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. So they were looking, and they knew that a king was to be born. They were stargazers. So they were watching the heavens, they watched the sky, and they saw this star, and they'd seen it for two years. They'd seen it for two years, and... And so here they come, and they, they know that there's something more. They just have a little glimpse, a little taste. But it's a clue that's leading them to Jesus. Now, they knew from the heavens there was to be a king born. In, in Numbers 24 and verse 17, I want you to look at this, Numbers 24 and verse 17. The Bible says, I shall, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. 
and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy the children of, of, of Seth. So, uh, you know, I don't know how much knowledge these men had. Uh, I don't know how much uh, uh, learning they had about, about the Christ or about the, uh, Judaism, but obviously Jews had been scattered for a great number of years into all these regions. I mean, they've been carried off into captivity. We know that when, once they were carried off into captivity uh, by Nebuchadnezzar, with where, da, where we find Daniel, and then they returned uh, from, uh, 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 from captivity in the book of Ezra, when they came back, Cyrus sent them back. All of them didn't go back. So Jews were still scattered. They were, they were under all uh, corners of the earth, you might say. So they had some knowledge about the Messiah, that there was going to be a king born. But it was very limited. But the heavens, nature, gave them some information that caused them to seek more. Now, friends, you can learn a lot from looking at, at the heavens, at, looking at the creation. The Bible says in, Proverbs, in Psalm 19... Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6. Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show forth his handiwork. Day unto day, other speech, and night unto night, other knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is going out through all the earth, their words to the end of uh, <clears throat> the words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of a chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man. To run a race, his going forth is from the end of the of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of the uh, end of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So, when you look at the heavens, it declares the glory of God. I mean, certainly there is some information that you can get uh, from looking at the, at the creation, and but creation may just seem to be a proof of Creator. That doesn't tell you who He is. Uh, Paul said the invisible things. Of him are clearly seen. Romans 1 and verse uh, 20. There's a lot of things that make up this world that we can't see, but the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are all without excuse. So the, the power of God can be seen, but you can't find truth by looking at nature. You can't find Christ, you can't find God, you can't find the Son of God, simply by looking at, at, at the creation. You just can't find Him that way. That will only take you so far. You know, not too long ago, what, a couple weeks ago, everybody was looking up at the heavens. Everybody was looking at the sun. Oh, look at the eclipse. Look at this, it's a wonderful thing. People were driving to certain parts of the country where it was going to be a, you know, 99.9% .9 dark. And so... Uh, uh, oh, it's a, it's a great thing, once-in-a-lifetime thing. Well, what did you learn from that? What did you really learn about God, about Christ, about your salvation from looking at the eclipse? Now, oh yeah, it was amazing. It was neat. I talked to one uh, brother in Tennessee. I asked him, did you watch the eclipse? He said, yeah, I want my money back. <laughs> you know, I wasn't impressed. Well, you know, it got, this little, got a little dark here and clouds came over. It looked kind of like dusk, I guess, but... What did that tell you about God? Nothing. It didn't tell you anything about God. You can follow the comets, you can follow the stars, but you won't find the truth, my friends. You know, you can read your horoscope in the newspaper. It won't tell you how to get to heaven. But a lot of people will lay stock in what the horoscopes say, what the palm readers say. They'll, you know, they'll go by the almanac and they'll plant their crops by the sign of the moon and they'll make sure that you know, they dig their post holes just right. I've always heard if you don't dig your post holes by the right side of the moon, you won't have enough dirt to fill the hole back up. I don't know. Maybe, you know. But here are people that are doing everything by all kinds of, of, of uh, uh, old wives tales and everything, but they won't go to the Bible to find the truth about their salvation. So you can look at the signs. You can look at the stars, but it won't tell you where, where to find Jesus. Now, here's why these men were wise. They saw the star, but in order to truly find the Messiah, they had to go to the Scriptures. The stars will only get you so far. But to find the cross, you have to go to the Scriptures. Now, notice this. In Matthew chapter 2, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 4, When he had gathered the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, 
he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written in the prophet, And thus, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not least among the princes of Judah? For out of, the, out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Now, they had to find where it was written. They had to find the scriptures. They had to find the word. And so they were wise because when they ran out of clues, they finally went to the scriptures. Right? The star got them so far, but then they had to go to the scriptures. Now, friends, that's exactly what they did. Because the scriptures will tell them where to look. And friends, the Bible tells you the same thing. The Bible tells you the same thing about where to find Jesus, where you can where you can go to find wisdom if you just look in the Scriptures. Notice in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7, Matthew 7 and verse 7, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find it. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. If you're really looking for the truth, dear friend, I can promise you that you'll find it. If you're really looking for what you must do to be saved, if you're really looking for scriptures that will save your soul, if you're really looking for the way of salvation, I, I assure you, you'll find it. And the fact that you're watching this program tells me that you're, that you're looking for it. You're interested in it, at least to some degree. And friends, that's why we say, if you ask, we'll help you. If you're seeking, you ask our help, we'll help you. But the way that you're going to find, uh, find uh, the Lord is you're going to have to search the Scriptures. Now, God's Word shows the way. Isaiah prophesied that there's a way. It's going to be called the way of holiness. And the wayfaring man, though fools, will not err therein. You don't just stumble upon it. You've got to look for it. Now, these men were wise. These men were wise because they looked at the book. Friends, they found individuals who would tell them where it was prophesied. They found individuals that would that would that knew, hey, Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. And they and the wise men, the wise men quoted uh, Micah chapter five and verse two. But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the, uh, the thousands of Judah, yet of thee shall come forth one that is a ruler of Israel, whose goings have uh, goings forth have been from old and from everlasting. So they found the scripture. They found where it was written. They got a word from the Lord that told them more information. Now friends, you can only go so far. The chief priest, they wouldn't have known except they had to search the word. Now friends, this is why we're telling you when you want to know a Bible answer, when you want to know what the scripture says, then what you have to do is you have to go to the book and you have to find someone that will give you the book. But if you go to your pastor, bishop, rabbi, right, your elder, your right reverend, holy Joe, doctor so-and-so, and you say, where in the Bible can we find, and you just ask the question, find the sinner's prayer, find the Baptist church, find any man-made church, find uh, uh, born in sin, find all these things. Find the scripture, search the scripture, they won't find it. So what you have to do is you have to go to someone who knows the book. Friends, I don't know how many times people have said, well, one thing about the folks in the Church of Christ, they know the book. You know why we know the book? We search the Scriptures. You know why we know the book? Because we know that this is the way of salvation. You know why we know the Scriptures? Because we know that if we're going to be teaching you and giving you some instruction on what you must do to be saved, we're going to have to know the book too. So friends, why don't you listen? listen? If you want to know what the Bible says, hey, just, just call on the phone. Right? Just call us up. Email us. Write us. Whatever. Come by and visit us. We're, going to, we're searching the Scriptures for you. And so if you want to know uh, what you must do to be saved, or you want to know where, the, where to find Christ, you've got to search the Scriptures, friends. Jesus said to search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, John 5, 39. You can, you can search all kinds of different books. And that's, that's really part of people's problems. They'll read Chicken Soup for the Soul. They'll read Joel Osteen's book. They'll read John Hagee's book. They'll read, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the, Joyce Meyer's book. They'll give Creeflo, Creeflo a dollar for his book. 
not worth a dollar, not worth a dime. And they'll buy all these different books and they'll search them, but they won't search the scriptures. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll search the, the Book of Mormon. They'll search the Watchtower. They'll search the, the disciplines and the, and the catechisms, but they won't search the Bible. Friends, why, why will you not search the scriptures? Wise men will search the scriptures. Wise men put down all the chicken soup for the soul and they get the scriptures. Right? See what we're talking about? That's what wise men do. That's what wise men do. And so that's what we're, we're telling you. Where, where is she going to go? You know, Jesus asked Peter, are you going to leave me? He said, where else will we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. And friends, I'm asking the same thing. Why don't you go? Why don't you go to the book? And if you need some help, why don't you give us a call? Listen, we'll help you. We'll give you scriptures. We'll search the scriptures with you. <clears throat> In Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, Philip asked the eunuch, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man guide me? Except some man should guide me. Why not search the scriptures? Let someone help you. The words are going are going to guide your or guide your feet. Give you direction. A lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. That's the word of God. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Second Peter 1 3. He gives all scripture that is proper for doctrine, for approval, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished with all good works. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Why don't you search that book? Why don't you search this book? See, that's why we put it up here. So you can read it with us. That's why we we're showing you. Why? Because we want you to be wise. We want you to be wise unto salvation. Now, here is why the wise men were wise. See, they've been looking. They've been looking for the Christ. They've been looking for the Christ. Now look at this. They came. They were searching. They asked the right questions. And then, and then they were told. And when they heard the king... Right? Herod put all the wise men together, found out where, where Christ is going to be born. And when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. You know what will bring you exceeding great joy? It's after you search the scriptures, now the way is going to be more clear. Once you search the Bible, friends, the way of salvation is going to be a whole lot clearer. Once you put put aside all the creed books and catechisms and manuals and and uh, you know conventional speeches, convention speeches, and whatever it is that you're following, and just pick up the Bible, the way is so much clearer. Now they weren't there yet. They weren't there yet, but they had great joy because <clears throat> now they knew the way. Now they knew the way. See. Now we're on the right track. Now it's <clears throat> it's like you're on a long journey, and you're driving down the road, and you go, you know, I wonder what road I'm on. Am I on the right track? And then you see a sign. You see a sign that's pointing you in the right direction. You go, hey, I'm on the right road. I know I'm on the right track here. Why? Because I saw the sign. I saw the sign that was pointing me and showing me I'm on the right track. Friends, that's exactly what you will do. If you put down all these creed books and you just get to the Bible, You'll be exceedingly joyful when the way becomes clearer to you. And that's what we can do for you. You know, friends, it's like the man that found a treasure. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44, the Bible says, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in the field, which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy... And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field. Now, he didn't have the treasure. He just found it. He knew it was in the field. He knew where it was. But he still had to do something in order to acquire the treasure. Friends, that's, just where, that's where you are. If you're a wise man, you're a wise person, you're looking for the truth. And you're saying, you know what, I, I, I know there's got to be a better way. You know what you'll do? You, if you'll open up the scripture... If you want to study with us, what we'll do is we'll show you the way and we'll, we'll clear out all that denominational muddle and just give you the scripture. Friends, I don't know how many times I've had Bible study people and I just say, look, 
You read this. Just read it. Read it. What do you think? And they read it. And it's like, well, what you're saying? No, I'm not saying anything, friends. I'm going to let you read it. You tell me what the Bible says. Now be honest. So you just be honest with yourself. If you'll put aside all the, the, the creeds and the catechisms and the man-made garbage that's been put in your head and say, you know what, I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to open the Bible and this is what it says. Friends, you'll you come away with great joy just by being on the right track. See, I know there's a lot of people that, that are out there that are in denominations and you're looking for something better. You know... You know the church you're in is, is just a club. It's not really the church. It's a club, right? You got the smoke machines and the loud music and the, you know, people jumping around and I don't know. They probably have cigarette lighters going back and forth. I don't know why they wouldn't have everything else going in there, right? Tree houses, cafes, and bands and whatever. <clears throat> hey, is that really what you're looking for? I don't think it is. I think what you're looking for is the truth. You're looking for something beyond all that clutter and all that chaos and all that confusion. Well, go to the Scriptures. Find out what it says. Now, if you start reading the Bible, it's going to show you the way. The Bible will show you the way. And there are some folks out there that were in denominations and when they saw the truth, boy, they were, they were overjoyed. They were overjoyed and said, this is where I need to be. Now, you'll find that, you know what, there's going to be a lot of people that are just like you, that were just like you, that were looking, searching, and then they found the truth and they said, this is, this is where I need to be. Now, friends, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, uh, it, it tells you how to get on the right track. Acts 2, verse 41, look at this. They that gladly received his word were baptized the same day were added to them about 3,000 souls. You know why they were glad? Because they received His Word. They gladly received the Word and then they were glad because they had obeyed it. See? No, they were glad. They were glad actually before they obeyed the Gospel. Not, not that were, they weren't saved. But they were glad because someone told them what they must do. See that? Now the eunuch on the other hand, the eunuch showed joy on the other side of it. He was baptized, and the Bible says he went on his way rejoicing. All right? So here's what we're talking about. Here's some joy that comes from just knowing the way, knowing the truth. In John, uh, look, in Acts 13, Acts 13, and verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against these those things which were spoken by Paul, uh, contradicting blasphemy. And Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee as to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. They were glad when they realized, you know what, the way is going to be opened up to us. Because that's where you'll be. But you've got to be wise enough to say, I I'm going to start looking. I'm going to start looking. Now, what's the way to the Father? You know, Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, John 14, and verse 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So here's the way. The way goes through Christ. The way goes through Christ. Now, if you're going to get to the Father, you have to go through Christ. So how do I get to Christ? Well, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Acts 5 and verse 23, that Christ is the sorry about that Acts 5 uh, not Acts 5 sorry Ephesians 5 and verse 23 that Christ is the Savior of the body what body? the body of Christ his own body in Acts uh, excuse me Ephesians 1 
22. God gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. The church is the body, and the body is the church. And Christ is going to save the body. So you have to be a part of that body in order to be saved. In order to get to the Father, you have to be part of that body. Now, when you obey the gospel, guess where you're at it? Guess where you're at it? In Acts 2, verse 47, the Bible says, The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Added to the church, that means they were added to the body. The church is the body, the body is the church, and it belongs to Christ, so therefore they were added to Christ. So if you want to get to heaven, if you want to get to the Father, you have to be in this body. How do I know that? If you want to get to the, the Father, you have to be in this, in this church. How do I know that? Because look, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse 24, stay with me, then cometh the end when he shall deliver up the kingdom to, the, to, the, to God, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. In the end, he's going to save the church, the body, the kingdom, all the same. And he's going to deliver the kingdom or the church or the body up to the Father. So how do you get to the Father? You have to be in the body of Christ. And then, in the end, the church, or the body, or the kingdom is going to be delivered up to the Father. That's how you get to the Father. You have to be in this body. Now, wise men will rejoice when they find that way. When they realize, you know what, there's only one church in the Bible. When they realize there's only one church that Christ shed his blood for, Acts 20, verse 28. And when they realize that I have to be a member of that body of Christ, that body, that church, in order to be saved, they'll rejoice and say, I have found it, I have found it. I have a dear brother in Christ. And he's 98 years old now. And he found the truth when he was 88. And he came out of the Methodist church. Been there for 55, been in Methodist church 55 years. He came out of it. And he said it was the greatest thing he'd ever done. He found the truth. Now, friends, I know, I know that if you are looking for the truth, you are truly wise, and you can find it. You can find the truth if you're really looking for it. And that's why we're saying all it takes is open your mind, open your Bible, and be willing to receive the instruction because that's what wise men do. And notice this. Once the wise men, once the wise men knew the way when they went on the way rejoicing, look what else they did now. Here's the next thing you can do. They revered the Christ. They worshiped Jesus. Now in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11, look at this. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with his mother, with Mary's mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened the treasures, they, laid, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, here's what searching the scripture shows. Let's look at the wise men again. They had limited knowledge from looking at nature. They saw the star, but they had to search the scriptures. They found the scriptures, and the scriptures told them where to find Christ. They rejoiced at finding the way, and then they get to Christ, and they worshiped him. They worshiped him. Now, friends, you might be claiming you might be claiming to worship the Lord. You may be claiming to worship Jesus. But the fact of the matter is, if you're not even being obedient to the gospel, you haven't even found the truth. You have you're not even on the right way. You're still out there gazing at the stars. You think you're worshiping Jesus? No. Can't be. See? Wise men don't stay outside looking at the stars. They search the scriptures and they find the Savior. So here, here the wise men, they actually arrive where Jesus is. They came into the house where the young child was. Now remember what we said? The wise men came to the house, not the manger. They're not out there in the barn somewhere. <clears throat> not out there with a bunch of animals. They're in the house. 
And it's a young child, not an infant laid in swaddling, clo swaddling clothes. See what certain scriptures will do? You'll find all kinds of things out about the, the Christ when you start opening the scriptures. He's in the house, and it's a young child, and they worshiped Him. Wise men come to Christ and worship Him. Now friends, let me tell you something. They, they worship Him. Not them. Now the catch will tell you, well, let's let's go worship Mary. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. We're not worshiping Mary. We're not worshiping Mary. Mary was not worshipped. Only Christ was the one that's being worshipped here. Only Christ was the one that was that was given obeisance. Because he and he alone was the child of God. They didn't worship Mary. So get that out of your head. Get that out of your mind, see? Get that clutter from the Catholic Church out of there. No, it's not there. It's not in the book. Let's get back to the Scriptures here. Search the Scriptures. What does it say? When you find Jesus, when you get to the house where Jesus is, guess what? You can worship Him and not Mary. So they came to the house. Well, if you're looking for Jesus, guess what? He's in a house. He's in the church. It is His house. It is His house. In Hebrews Let's look at Hebrews. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm drawing a blank here. Whose house we are. I know it's in Hebrews somewhere. Let me just get a moment here. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Hebrews 3. I know it's Hebrews 3. 3 6. See, it's in there. The one old time old fashioned preacher said, just read the whole Bible. It's in there. All right. But Christ is son over his own house. Whose house are we if we hold fast to confidence and rejoicing of the hope from to the end? Christ has a house. He's in the house. But friends, he's not in the house that, that John built. He's not in the house that John Smythe built over here in the Baptist church. He's not in the house that Wesley built. He's not in the house that Luther built. He's not in the house that Ellen G. White built. He's not in the house that, that Charles Taz Russell built. He's not in any of those houses. He's in his own house. And his house is the church. Christ is in the church. That's where he is. In Galatians 3 and verse 27. Galatians 3 27. Listen to what Paul said. As many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Well, how do you know the church is in Christ? Look at this in Romans 12, verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and remember the body of the church, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. One body in Christ. We're in Christ. So, if you want to be in the church, you want to find Christ, you have to be in the house or the church where Christ is. And that's the only place that He's going to receive any glory is in the church, which is His body. Galatians 3, verse 21. Let's put that up there. Galatians 3, 21. Unto Him be glory to the, unto, in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Glory to God is only found in the church. Now, friends, if you want to worship God, you want to worship Christ, you've got to be in the church. You've got to be in the house where he is. Just like the wise men. You have to get to the right house. Someone says, Well, I'm going to worship Jesus over here in a house that 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 uh, John built or in a house that Luther built. No, you cannot worship Christ in someone else's house. You have to worship Christ where He is. You have to worship Christ where He is. <clears throat> and make no mistake, when you're worshiping Christ, you're worshiping God. He's not a God like the like the uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses say. He's deity. He is God. Hebrews one verse eight. Hebrews one verse eight. But unto the Son He said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. 
Thy throne, O God. He's deity. The Father calls Him God. He calls Him deity. Now friends, listen. If Christ is just a little G, little God, a God, He doesn't worship. He doesn't receive worship. If He's just an angel, like the, like the Job's witness say, He wouldn't receive worship. But 14 times in the Bible, in the Gospel accounts, Christ receives worship. 14 times. Yet angels never receive worship. Look at, uh, jot this down, Revelation 19.10 and Revelation 22.9. Angels don't receive worship. They say, get up. Don't worship me. Worship God. Now, wise men know who to worship. So, friends, when I see people that are bowing down, praying to Mary, praying to St. Jude, St. Joe, St. John, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Julius and Julius or whoever, the name, praying to all these different saints, you know what that tells me? They're not very smart. They're not very wise. They're not wise in the Scriptures, that's for sure. Because the Scriptures would say, Look, you worship God. You pray to the Father. You don't pray to Jesus. You pray to the Father. Now you can worship Jesus because He's deity. But wise men look for Jesus in the house where He is going, where the Scriptures say He's going to be. Now are you wise? How wise are you? How wise are you? You know what us wise men do? Wise men give gifts. And when the wise men came to the house, they gave gifts, proper gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Take the time, sometimes, we won't read this, but just take the time and go read uh, Genesis 4 and 11, or 1 Kings 10 and verse 10. Look at things that are fitting for a king. Fitting for a king. That's what wise men bring. Wise men bring the precious things, the proper gifts to the king. Now, friends, if you're wise, if you're wise, you would bring Christ your most precious gift. And that is your life. You know, Jesus said, What is a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Matthew 16, 26. And that's what Christ wants. He wants your most precious commodity. That's your life. He wants you to give your life to Him. Not, not give your life for Him. He's not asking you to die for him, be willing to die. But what he's asking you to do is live your life for him. Look at this, in Romans chapter 12, in verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's reasonable for you to say, I'm going to give my life to Christ. You know what too often times what people do is, they say, I want to give my life to Christ, but... Uh, I'm going to take out a loan and I'm going to keep it. You know, it's kind of like one of those, you know, cash pond things, you know. I'm going to, I'm going to give him the title, but I'm going to keep my car. I'm, I'm going to give Christ my title. I'm going to give it the title to my life, but I'm going to really keep my own life. No, friends, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. In Luke 14, verse 26, Luke 14, in verse 26, notice this. If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother, his wife, his children, his brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also he cannot be my disciple. Now what's Christ saying here? You got to hate everybody? No. Love less. If you don't love Christ more than you love your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brethren, your sisters, and even your own life, you cannot be his disciple. He wouldn't say hate your father and your mother and then turn around in another place and say honor thy father and thy mother. He wouldn't say, hate your father and mother, and then in another place say, children, obey your parents. For this is right in the Lord, right? Honor thy father and thy mother. He would say that. So it's like, you have to love less. You have to love everybody less. Love Christ more. Put Him first. Now, wise men, wise men give Christ what He wants. Whosoever will not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now friends, how much do you love Jesus? How much are you really looking for him? If you find him, are you, are you willing to present your life to him? Now you know where to find him. We've told you where to find him. You'll find him in the church of Christ. You find him in his church. 
bears his name, it's his house, it's his kingdom, and that's where you can find him. Now, if you're wise, you'll follow the instructions provided by the scripture, and you'll come to the house where you can find Christ. That's what a wise man would do. So, are you wise? Are you wise? You know, I'm, I'm amazed at how many times people say, well, I'm, I'm going to give Christ my life. And yet they put everything else before Him in their life. So I'm going to give, I'm going to give, I'm going to give Christ my life. And you say, well, where do you go to church? Well, I don't go to church anymore. I don't have time. I'm working. I don't know how many times I've heard people say it. I don't have time to go to church. I'm working. What are you going to do, friends, when, you're, when this life is over? I'm working. I'm working. I don't have time for the Lord. Well, you better make time for the Lord. He made time for you. Now, people say, well, I'm going to give my life... I'm going to give my life to the Lord, but I'm not going to live. I'm not going to conform to His will. I'm not going to change the way I speak. I'm not going to change the way I dress. I'm not going to change the, uh, the way I act. How many times have you heard people say, well, I'm a Christian, and then they'll curse a blue screen? You haven't given Christ anything. You haven't, you haven't put yourself to death, put to death the old man of, of sin. When people tell me, well, I, I'm, I'm a Christian, and then they demonstrate by their life what they say, what they do, how they act, or what they, how they, what they wear, that tells me, no, you really haven't. Paul said, offer yourself a living sacrifice. You know? And as one man said, the problem with the living sacrifice, it keeps crawling off the altar. People say, I'm going to lay down, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. Well... You know, I'm not really going to stay up there. I'm not really going to be willing to sacrifice my life. I'm not going to submit my life to Him. Why? What's the problem? See, friends, are you wise? Wise men, wise men, search for the search for the Savior. They'll open the Scriptures and find out where He is. They rejoice when the way becomes clear. They rejoice. They rejoice when they're going on their journeys and then they find the place where Christ is. Now, again, you know where Christ is. But what are you, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with this information? Are you wise? You're obviously wise. You're wise enough to be watching a program that's, going to be, that's giving you the Bible. You're watching a program that's, that's helping you find the truth or find the, find the Savior. By showing you the scriptures, putting them up on the screen, opening the phone line, saying, "Ask a question." You're wise enough to be to be watching and learning and listening. But now, what are you going to do? Are you going to bring your life to Christ? Are you going to bring your your life and say, "I surrender all"? Are you going to bring your life and say, "You know what? I'm I'm going to lay down my." My offering at the at the altar of Christ. I'm going to submit to His will. I'm going to yield myself to His will. Friends, His will is this. His will is for you not to be lost. And that means that you have to believe that He is the Son of God. In John 8, verse 24. John 8, verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. He wants you to believe that he is, that he's the Son of God, that he's dead. Believe that I am, or you'll die in your sins. Then he says, you must repent. In Acts 17 and verse 30, the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Will you do that? Will you repent? Turn from your ways. Turn from living in the world. Turn from <clears throat> following your own wisdom. And see the wisdom that's in the God's Word. Repent. Confess Christ before man. Acts 8 and verse 37. 
Philip told the eunuch, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he said, I be answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Will you do that? Will you confess Christ before man? Will you be baptized for the remission of sins? Acts 22, verse 16. And now while tearest thou, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Will you do that? Will you, will you submit to being baptized? See, Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Believe that he is the Son of God, repent, confess, and then be baptized, you shall be saved. And if you believe not, you know, if you're not even willing to do the first thing, you're going to be lost. He didn't have to say, he that repenteth not, confesseth not, and is baptized not shall be, shall be damned. If you don't believe, you're not going to do any of them. But if you really believe and you're really looking for the truth, you're really looking for the Savior, here's where you can find Him. If you're wise, and then yield your life into His service. Yield your life submitting to God's will. On how many times people... You know, you just won't be restrained by the word. Well, are you wise? If you're wise, you will. Here's the thing, friend. Wise men follow directions. If you didn't learn anything about this lesson and about the wise men, you learned this. They followed directions. They went to the place where the scripture said they'd find Christ. And then when God told them, don't go back the way you came. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 12. Matthew 2, verse 12. Being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country another way. Friends, this has been a warning from God. Don't go back the way you were. Look, if you're in a man-made church, you, can't find, you cannot find it in this book. If you're in a church that you cannot find in this book, we have, we're offering $1,000 to anybody that they can find a different kind of church in this book. If you're in one of those churches you can that cannot be found in the Bible, friends, go back another way. You came you came here tonight listening for instructions. You found it. Don't go back the way you were. Make a determination right now to say, you know what, I'm, I'm changing. I'm not going back the way I the way I came. Wise men will listen will listen to instruction. The proverb writer says that a, that a wise man see a trouble and, and hides himself, but a fool just keeps on going. Fred, do you not, do you not see the trouble that's awaiting you? In 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 6 through 9. 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 through 9. It's a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall appear, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Is that you? Do you see what's coming? Them that obey not the gospel? That's where you are headed, friends. Look, are you wise? You know, there's a lot of people in Houston tonight that didn't listen to instruction. I heard, I heard that one of the sheriffs down there say to people, either you need to get out of town. If you don't get out of town, write your, take a mark, uh, Sharpie and write your social security number on your arm somewhere so we can identify the body. If you're not going to listen to instruction, friends, there's not much we can do to help you. So just write your social security number on your, on your arm so we know what to do with the body. Friends, if you're wise, you'll take what you've heard tonight and you'll render obedience to the gospel. Friends, I'm out of time. I want to remind you, next, uh, starting Sunday, a word from the Lord will be on uh, Rockingham County Radio, 1490, 5 p.m. Tune in, download the app, watch on the inter internet, or uh, listen to the radio. And we hope that you'll call in and let us know you're listening. Until next time, friends, make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.